Hey everybody, Nick here, and today, got a disassembly for you, this little guy right here, this is Civivi Elementum. So, uh, what I'm seeing here is a uh, T8 pivot, T8 screws on both sides here, it looks like this one is actually being held in place by the pocket clip, so I'll go ahead and do a kind of a flip-flop style, where I unscrew the back screws on the top, and then the uh, pivot on the back, not ideal, but you know, I'd rather not take off the pocket clip. I figure at any given moment, if I'm removing fewer screws, that's generally a better thing. Just for the world, it, because every time you mess with a screw, you run the risk of stripping it out, etc. So, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to go ahead and take that tack here. Um, I forgot to show you ahead of time. Centering's on point. Action's pretty good. Um, and so let's go ahead and just pop this guy apart. Uh, if you have a curious about any of the tools I'm using to do so, uh, go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools. Get a full list of my, uh, my, my tools that I'm using here. But okay, go ahead and kind of lift things off here. There we go. So what we see here is actually a fair amount of internal skeletonization. It's nice. Everything else looks good. Good old-fashioned bearings. Yeah, pretty easy. Pretty clean. You know, one would expect maybe some... I don't know what one would expect here. A relatively budget knife. I might expect a little less skeletonization on the inside there. But, um, you know, weight savings, I suppose. Can't argue with it particularly. Uh, this is not particularly dirty. It's uh, relatively fresh from the factory. So that's good. And, um, yeah. Go ahead and pop this. Just kind of moving the pivot out of the way there so I can get to the inside of this detent ball. Or, uh, not the detent ball track. So I can get to the inside of the blade race there. Bearing race, that's what I want. Uh, one thing to note here is that on the pivot, there is a uh, little cutout there. And then on the micata here, there's actually an equivalent cutout. So we just need to make sure those things are nested together when the time comes to put this guy back together. Otherwise, we will end up with terrible play and it will be just an ugly situation in general. So that's good. Um, go ahead and put that in place there. This is pretty straightforward here. We're going to be done with this in just a couple of minutes, I hope. Those are fateful words, of course. I, I shouldn't have said them. Uh, that, that was probably not the right approach to, to, to ever say those words, but at the same time, I, I, I did believe them. Uh, well, actually, before I go further, I'm going to use some uh, 10 weight nano oil here. Just put things back together. And a little drip, a little drip right there. Problem solved. Case closed. All righty. And we'll go ahead and put this there. That was maybe a little too much, but again, Exxon Shabazz over here. What do you want from me? All right, um, so I'll go ahead and set that down there. Uh, one thing I will do is I'll transfer over the stop pin just for my ease of sanity. Because I'm putting things back together from this side. That way everything's in position here. Go ahead and do the... Um, and drip a little bit of oil right into the detent ball path, or a hole that'll lubricate the detent ball path. That was, again, a little too much, but that's okay. Sorry, Leong Ma, who recently commented that you only need a single drop. And everybody turned around to look at me, so to speak. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and snap everything back together here. I know what you're thinking. Oh, snap. Probably weren't thinking that. Um, let's go ahead and grab some thread locker here. I'm going to use some blue Loctite on a stick here. Blue 242. Uh, come on now. It's a very shallow screw, unfortunately. Like, there is just really... What we can see here is that there really just isn't that much actual depth to the, the, to the torque side. Because they chamfer the inside of the screw, so it's just like it's barely there. Um, I, uh, deep screws is something that is Elric, actually. A uh, YouTuber who hasn't been very active lately, I don't think. But, um, Zell pointed that out in one of his videos at one point, and it was just like, yeah, you know what, that's a really nice point. But okay, go ahead and put this guy, a little bit of thread locker residue on there already, so we know we're going the right route here. Put this right here. Oof, okay. Come on. Gotta make sure the scale aligns, that's the trick here. Uh, why are you not wanting to go into position here, bro? Uh, yeah, I have no freaking idea what I'm doing here. Why are you not working? There we go. 
I think I was just subtly out of alignment with regards to the, uh, uh, you know, the angle of attack there. Maybe the screw bit into the micata a little bit. I don't know. Either way, all's well that ends well, right? Well, at least that's the, uh, that's the dream. All right. And again, we pop this into place here. And we should be fully tightened and good to go. Let's see where we're at action-wise. Good to go. Centered, happy. Let's see if we can reduce pivot tension a little bit. Still be centered and happy. Uh, is that the slightest hint of blade play? No? <laughs> All right. Yeah, centering is very slightly off here. The action wasn't improved in any particular way by that. I'm going to loosen these back screws here. I am being super retentive, folks. This, I mean, <laughs> what a shock, Nick Shabazz being retentive. Yeah, but uh, it may be even more so than usual for me. Yeah, that's pretty damn well dead center. Yeah. That'll do. Right now, I'm just being a pain about it. Very, very slightly off center, maybe. Yeah, okay, we're good to go. I can barely tell if that is. So, look, it's good. Um, aside from my retentiveness, we are absolutely all set. Um, there we go. Hope this is interesting to you. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.